Today we're exploring a new model from Hilo AI, image to video live. Now, before you're left thinking, oh, just another AI video model, as if we don't have enough already, Hilo AI is actually doing something a little bit different compared to everybody else in the AI video space. With this new model, they've taken a slightly different approach in terms of how the model has been trained and the objectives that it's been set up to achieve. If we look at the promo video and the description, we can see over here that the idea is to transform static art into dynamic masterpieces. And if we have a look at the video over here, you can see how the entire premise is about taking pieces of art, 2D illustrations, and giving them life and animation. This is opposed to typical image to video approaches where the entire idea is to create avenues for video storytelling. However, that doesn't mean that this model doesn't have a few tricks up its sleeve and can't be used for storytelling approaches. And after spending some time with the model, I've been able to push it to its limits and figure out what it does well, what it doesn't. And if you stay tuned to the end, you can even see a short film that I put together using image to video live. So it definitely can be used for storytelling. The new image to video live Live's model's strengths come in trying to bring subtle animations to pieces of artwork or illustration, as I mentioned earlier. And having tested a few images, we can see over here that it performs very well. It's very adept at creating those kind of lo-fi style subtle animation videos that we see with lo-fi style music. We can see another one here where again, it was just a simple static image of a girl sitting working and the model applies these subtle animations to her, kind of giving the image a little bit of life. However, if we pay attention closely, we can start to see some of the things that the model does differently, which can inform us on how we can take advantage of the model in more complex situations. The first most interesting thing that the model does is it almost takes the subject in the illustration and breaks it up and almost gives it a skeleton. And we can see that here with the subtle movements in the feet, in the arms. It just kind of looks like it's almost got that flash-like skeleton approach. And that is something that I begin to see happening quite a lot. And we can actually see that quite prominently in some of the failures from the video. So what I've shown you so far are a couple of static scenes. The subject is doing something that isn't very overly energetic. They're just kind of sitting there working and we're able to apply those subtle animations. I then decided to see if we could try and animate scenes with a little bit more energy in them. And we have here a couple of scenes for another video clip that I tried to put together that I wasn't able to because of the way the model is set up. But again, and we learn a lot from it. So here's another static one. And this is actually one of my favorites because it's, again, that subtle animation. You kind of get the droplets falling off the leaf. And this really does have that anime vibe and feel to it. But what happens if we apply some action? So even just some simple action, like trying to have this character run across the beach, began to result in some problems. We can see over here that I finally was able to get him run off the frame like I wanted him to with a nice little splash over here. The interesting thing is, although you do get a little bit of deformation happening here, for the most part, there is no blurring on the character, which tends to happen with, with a lot of other AI video models. We can see him here kind of running off relatively smoothly. There was a tiny bit of weirdness art happening over here, but again, very subtle. And we can see here another set of action scenes that I tried to use the model on, try to get these characters to play football. In the way that the characters are kind of moving, this is where I was referring to that is almost like they've had a skeleton applied to them where you can kind of see him here standing here and kind of jumping back and forth. Obviously the video didn't work out, but as I said, this lends itself to a lot of information on what we can do with the model. I especially find the way that the ball is kind of floating around and the leaves are coming around here. So again, there's some understanding of physics and, and motion. And again, here is another failure. You can see that for the first few seconds there's not really much action happening but you are getting kind of this the billowing of the clothes the falling leaves and again the model trying to play to its strengths here's another one again trying to get the character to kick the football and once again from the very beginning it starts off with playing to its strengths where you kind of get this really nice animation of the sand and then it kind of goes a bit wonky as the character tries to kick the ball but once again you kind of have that jelly skeleton like movement so what can we do with that information? Well, keeping in mind that the model doesn't like these very high action scenes and it's all about doing these subtle animations, I started messing around with this around Christmas and I published a couple of these videos as Merry Christmas greetings. So we can see here that with a simple frame with a character in the center, this is where the model really shines. And our character here is 3D generated and she's able to show a great deal of expression, show this fantastic level of movement and it was just fantastic overall. Great fidelity, no blurring. This could look like it was animated on a computer, right? And, and almost all of the clips had this 
fantastic representation. The hair performs very well, she moves very well, right? Here's another instance of another character. She's kind of looking back and she kind of gets excited. And these are all without prompt. I just wanted to see what the model would do. And it just did this very well. I do wish that they did have a lip sync here on Minimax. It would have been great to actually have the character wish a Merry Christmas. I tried a couple here with Santa. This was my favorite because he kind of looks like a deranged evil Santa. This one's a little bit more of a joyful one, but you can see how when you give the model something that performs with strength, it does a phenomenal job. And, and even here in the background where it's kind of providing the animation here is just great. The model also works very well with more than one character in the frame. So we can see here, I tried to input an image of Santa with an elf, but I got these kind of overly romantic vibes. So there's that. But, you know, you've got them here. You've got that subtle animation. And again, the original image could just be an illustration in and of itself. And just by plugging it into the model, you get this little bit of animation, which gives it that kind of extra life. You know, this could be a smart TV as kind of something that you could put in the background as the background piece of art. Here's another one. Again, playing to the model strength here is another lo-fi vibe kind of clip that you could just have on a loop. You've got the rain coming down, people moving, very subtle movements. Now, so far I've just shown you anime style pieces of work. Their own examples have different art styles, but how does the model perform with realistic images? Well, surprisingly, the model does very well. So at this point, we're gonna actually look at how the model handles real life subjects and how it compares to the original image to video model so that we can understand what are the differences between the two models, how they handle the inputs differently. And with that information, you can make decisions about whether you want to use one model or the other for your particular project. So in this one, we've got a cat over here and the prompt is that the cat in the scene runs quickly towards the camera with electric with white electric sparks emanating from his eyes its entire body becomes surrounded by electricity as it runs faster and faster so basically this cat is going to get covered in electricity this is how the original model fares so we can see that the model followed the prompt fairly well the cat gets covered in electricity and runs off the, the key things here to note is that the shot is static and the cat is the one that's moving if we look at the live version, this actually performed a lot better than the original model. The prompt adherent is fantastic. You get the electricity emanating from its eyes, the entire body becomes surrounded by electricity and we see it moving faster and faster. Again, this is where the model excels. It's a complicated prompt, but the actual animation and movement is very subtle. The other thing that's worth noting is once again, the character and even the environment almost feel like the model has a 3D understanding of the space. Something that we didn't see as much with this other one where you almost see a bit of blurring and artifacting happening from the original model. Here's another fun example. This is a 3D cat playing at a Christmas cat party. We've uploaded the image here and this is how image to video live handles it. And we can see here once again playing to its strength. The animations are a lot more subtle but for this particular scene it makes sense. The character's got a lot less deformation. It's got the right shape. Again leading into my suspicion that it's applying some kind of skeletal system here so that the model is able to maintain its proportions fairly well. And even these hands that are kind of in the background have a lot less weirdness. They just kind of look like they're ooh, waving. Looking at a couple of more examples, here is one with a real character. And again, let's have a look at the original one. Now, this is a type of situation that Minimax performs very well with even on its base model, the original image to live. We can see here that without a prompt, the characters got very good facial expressions. I mean, there's not really much to start with, but you know, she maintains it. She looks around, aware of the surroundings. Not much weirdness here. Very good quality overall. If we look at the image to video live version, again, the model playing to its strengths. The focus is on those subtle movements. There's wind billowing in the hair. It's even added in this kind of fall leaf drop in the foreground. You've got movement happening here in the back. So this is where the model really shines. It's taking a still image and applying that subtle movement and animation, which is something that the original model could do, but this one does it so much better. Here's another one. And in fact, this one is one of those rare situations where I think the original model performs slightly better than the live one. So we've got the mouse over here kind of in this little boat enjoying the rain. There is a prompt which says the mouse runs its nutshell over the water as it rains lightly. So we watch the video and it's a cute little video. And the mouse is kind of here in this flooded water, chilling on his boat. The movement is subtle, the water's flowing here, the rain looks great, and there's really nothing here to complain much about. If we look at the image to live one, there are definitely some things that it does very well. A couple of weird things happening. I only ran this prompt once, so this is my first shot. I'm sure if we ran it again, you'd get 
you get a very usable result. So we've got over here the mouse. So what did the video do very well? Well, for starters, I think that the overall animation of the mouse is significantly better. The way he's kind of here on the boat, chilling with his umbrella, the subtle, you know, we've even got a little additional detail here of the tail moving in line with the mouse. So this is what's really cool is the model, it's aware of the mouse's limbs. This tail is actually leaving the shot and coming back all align with the movement of the mouse. The only thing where there is a little bit of weirdness is the water where it's kind of creating these weird splashes for no reason. And that's why I think if we regenerate it, in fact, I'm gonna do it right now, I think we'll get a better result. We'll come back to that later. Now, before we finish up, I did run one small little experiment to see how the model performs. I'm a huge anime fan and I've been thoroughly enjoying the an anime called Blue Lock. Long story short, it's a football anime about taking 11 strikers and turning them into Japan's number one football team. The first season had absolutely incredible animation. It was sublime, thoroughly enjoyable to watch. The second season, however, had a massive problem where there was absolutely no animation to the point where the anime has been redubbed PNG Lock instead of Blue Lock because so many of the episodes had entire sequences where you just had still images of the players with maybe some camera panning or some infographics appearing on top or just the character with the transparent PNG just simply sliding across the frame. So we're gonna try and see if with image to video live we can actually save Blue Lock and produce more animation than what the Blue Lock team was able to produce. So I grabbed two frames over here from episode 11 and I ran them through, tried some with and without prompt to see if we could get it animating. The results are mixed, but they're promising. I wouldn't be surprised if with the next version, Minimax's image to video model, if we might actually be able to turn some of these scenes into full-fledged animation. So let's have a look. In this first scene, the character is talking about himself and I kid you not, this is what was on the screen for like a full 10 seconds. It was just the camera panning very subtly to the right. So we're gonna try and see if we can actually get the character to run off the frame and bring a little bit of more motion back into the anime. This is already a step up, okay? Here's another attempt, and all of these three were without prompts. This one did go a little bit wonky, but this is what's really cool about it. Even when it goes wonky, the characters still got his relative body shape, right? You've got him running, you've got the body coming back, so it doesn't warp and transform into something else. It's to wear the body shape. It's just a matter of how do we get the model to follow through in the animation. A couple of other things here that are happening is we do have some movement with the characters in the background, which again, you could technically crop this and put this top left part in the anime and you still get more animation than what we got before. So having done those three initial prompts and seeing what the issue was, I added in that the player runs out of the frame. And this is what we got. Not bad. Not perfect, like I said, it's just shy of being potentially usable. So not bad for a first attempt. So that was one frame that we tried. I did grab another one over here, which again was just this frame, absolutely no movement for a whole bunch of seconds. This could have been a really cool jostling scene where they're fighting instead they're talking about what they're doing. This is what Image to Video Live was able to do. So this first attempt was again a bit of a failure. He's kind of running here in place and you get the ball coming out of nowhere. But again, you know, I keep coming back to this because I think it's a massive step in the right direction. You do have the characters moving. They do have that, that 3D feel to it where the model seems to have an understanding of the 3D space and the character's existence within that. Here's a second attempt, which actually works out a lot better. You have this character here on the side of the left who's supposed to be running off frame. He actually runs into the frame. But for that, there's at least two to four seconds here of some proper jostling, which again, it's not perfect, but it's more than what we got in the anime. And then let's finish up by looking at our re-attempt of the image to video live with the mouse. And there you have it. Oh my. I was gonna say, there we have it. The mouse movement is really cute. The rain is great, but the water could use some work and the umbrella is kind of going through his head. So interestingly, this seems to be a winner for the original image to video model. My suggestion is if you're using Minimax and you can spare the credits and you're using image to video, try and run your image and your prompt through both models and actually try it without a prompt because as you've seen, the models handle stuff a little bit differently and you could get substantially different results. Now, I'm gonna finish up this video by showing you guys a little clip of 
something I put together using exclusively image to video live. It's a little car moving, car racing sequence. So this is what is possible with image to video live if you're looking to try and do something with storytelling. Enjoy. So what did you guys think? If you found this video helpful or interesting, please don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon as it lets you know when I've uploaded a new video. And if you want to support the channel, please do come by our Patreon. Your support there helps me make these videos possible. And a big thank you to everyone who's already a Patreon supporter. If you do get around to playing with Hilo's new Minimax image to video live model, please do come by the Discord and drop what you're working on. I regularly put various pieces of my works in progress there, and it's a great opportunity to come and talk to me, ask questions, and we're trying to build out a community. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.